we have to be cautious not to overlook uh, the the. That the the is important. The Book of Common Prayer. It speaks to an emphasis in the English Reformation period and part of the ethos of the English Reformation to have a uniformity in liturgical rite. That there would be the Book of Common Prayer. In the first preface of the Book of Th Common Prayer, Thomas Cramer talks about this, where he says previously there had been a, a diversity of rites, and that it seems to be in the best interest to have a single rite. Now part of this is theological, that there would be a kind of a commonality in having the Book of Common Prayer, but it also speaks to the way in which liturgy is encultured and is part of a culture. And what is going on in terms of understanding liturgy and theology is at the same time there's a process of developing what it means to be English uh, at the same time. This is part of what was going on in the Reformation period, is that to be able to talk about things like England and France and Germany, whether as political entities or as cultural entities, was coming together. And you could talk about what it means to be French, had a culture and a language and a political entity to it. Uh, these things were coming together at the same time. And the 16th century is such an enormous time of change and transition uh, in Western Europe. So the the of the Book of Common Prayer is as much about having an emphasis for uniformity in liturgy and in liturgical rites as it is to try and reflect and create an understanding of what it means to be English, to have an English nation and an English people who had their own right. So in a sense it's cultural as well, that there should be one right for the realm. Uh, the most dramatic uh, uh, representation of this is when Richard Hooker later writes, uh, to be English is to be a member of the Church of England, and to be a member of the Church of England is to be English. That the two were kind of coterminous, the sense of church and the sense of nationhood. So it's theological, it's cultural, and it's also political. Um, we got the Book of Common Prayer backed up by legislation. It was uh, mandated by Parliament at the time. So not only is this something that is a, a work of theology, but it in turn reflects a certain cultural sense. It is the Book of Common Prayer for the English people. But it's also a the that is, in its practicality, uh, enforced by a certain legislative body that has the authority and the power to do that. I think this speaks to something that's very important in um, a sort of Reformation and almost pre-modern understanding where they placed a great emphasis on unity and uniformity. That was good. That was good. That was a sign of reflecting God's creation. That God was understood to be one. God was understood to be simple. Uh, and that things that reflected that were good because in, in a sense they reflected the divine order. Um, diversity was seen as a sign of chaos. Uh, if you think back to the opening chapters of Genesis where God brings order out of chaos. We tend to think of diversity as something to be celebrated, something to be treasured, something that's almost essential uh, to who we are as a people and a culture or a church. But in a sort of pre-modern understanding, diversity was bad and uniformity was good. Uniformity was good for all sorts of reasons. So I think part of the challenge, if we want to start off by talking about the Book of Common Prayer, what does it mean to have a legacy of something that has strived for uniformity and singularity at a time when we're beginning to increasingly understand the value and importance of diversity? I think it creates a sense of common identity, common culture, common theology. That was part of, what, that was part of the, the, the reasoning behind having the Book of Common Prayer. It could create kind of a touchstone. It could create um, a common experience, a common theology, a, common, a shared worship experience. It could create a community. And I think that's what I, um, was part of the, the powerful nature of the Book of Common Prayer, is that suddenly there was a, a kind of shared touchstone of liturgy and community, at the same time that a, a nation was going through an upheaval, a tremendous period of upheaval, a devastating period of civil war in the end of the 1400s, early 1500s, um, profound differences between the north of England and the south of England and the west of England. I mean, so that's why I think it's key to think of the coming together of a sense of cultural and national identity and the, the emphasis on having a single kind of liturgical, uh, theological experience. It was creating um, what we would call now sort of a sense of community. And I think that's something um, in, in our, own, our, our own experience is very different in a lot of ways. But I think it's pretty clear there are a lot of people still looking for a sense of community. 
for a sense of place, for a sense of belonging. And so I think there's a way in which, while I think we need to balance um, having an, realizing the importance and significance of diversity, but also how can we begin to find a sort of shared experience uh, and shared understandings of theology and liturgy? How do we balance those two? How do we not lose the powerful way in which um, shared experience can create community while always being cautious perhaps about privileging um, any particular understanding of that? as being normative.